So, of the three eye mechanisms that I've designed recently, this one was actually the first one that I came up with, and then from this design I made the simplified mechanism and then I made the machined mechanism. So this was actually the starting point. I would say that it's quite easy to build in that all of the parts are simple 3D printed components that don't require supports and there's no need for any machining or anything like that. Um, the only trouble with it is that some of the components are maybe a little bit hard to require. It's just the kind of stuff that isn't necessarily on Amazon Prime and you might have to go to eBay or some kind of like hobby um, websites to try and acquire. But overall I would say this is still a pretty easy to make project. My previous video was a very simplified design. It was designed to just be accessible to as many different people as possible. But this design is a little bit of a step up from that um, while still avoiding any sort of machining or anything like that. So this design is based on a mechanism which is quite commonly used in professional eye mechanisms that I've seen but it circumvents any machining by using 3D printed part. Compared to uh, the previous design is more compact, it's more robust and it's actually the lightest of the three. It's actually the lightest and most compact of all three designs. It's designed to use the snapping eyes which I have a separate video on and which all of my different eye mechanisms use. I would say that this design is actually my favourite because it's, it's really sort of light, it has a good sort of feel about it. Um, and it seems to just be really responsive and fast. I don't know if it's the choice of servos that I've used or just something about the mechanism seems to make it work really well. But compared to the others, I've had virtually no issues with it. it just whenever I want to use it, I can just plug it in and it just goes fine. This is also the first thing that I've designed where I really figured out how to print snap fits, which I think is going to be a really great tool for other things that I go on to design. So the requirements to start building this project aren't very high, but I would recommend you're fairly comfortable with 3D printing. Um, you can use your printer to print at a layer height of between 0.15 and 0.2 millimeters, um, and you need to be certain that small parts that you print will be strong enough. Uh, which all that really entails is using a high quality filament and making sure you've sort of dialed in your print settings so that it's not too hot or too cold or anything like that. You can have no trouble whatsoever using a proper printer like an Ultimaker or a MakerBot but for people like me using a GE Tech you might have a little bit of trial and error before you get every part perfect. If you are looking for something easier however um, have a look at my previous video um, which is a simplified eye mechanism. So the way that this mechanism works is by having a separate rod for each axis um, which actuate the eye very close to the center point of the eye sphere. So looking into the eye mechanism it firstly has a pivot in the center which is actuated by a lever and in my design this controls the x-axis motion. And this is a good efficient motion because it only moves in one plane um, whereas lots of other animatronic eye designs have sort of complex uh, movements that are in a variety of different planes. So this x-axis component connects to the eye via the eye adapter but the component that actually makes the eye move in the eye in the y-axis is another rod that's offset parallel to the main pivot. Because these levers actually move the eye at a point which intersects the central origin of the spherical eye, the two motions don't affect each other and each servo only controls one axis and then the way that the eyelids work is just a really simple lever that runs through the center and the top pair and the bottom pair are linked so they only use one servo each. So the parts that you'll need for this project are some screws, you'll need around 40 M2 6mm screws and then a couple of longer 10mm M2 screws. Um, there's also a couple of other screws that are used for the servo but they do actually come with a servo so you don't need to worry about those. The hobby components that are a little bit trickier to source are four M2 servo ball links and four M2 25mm pushrod connectors but I should just note that the pushrod connectors are actually just threaded bar so if you're really struggling to get something branded as a pushrod you can always just buy a bowl and saw it off or just buy some plain threaded rod but it does need to be 25mm 
Um, so for the electronics you'll need an Arduino Uno or anything that can accept three analog signals, one digital and can communicate through SDA and SCL ports. Um, you'll need a servo driver board which in this instance is an Adafruit 16 channel servo driver and that's what my code uses so that is the one that I recommend you buy. Um, you'll need a power supply, a good one to use that I'm using is 5 volts and 4 amps. Uh, you'll need a 2 axis joystick, a potentiometer which is used to control the sort of how open or closed the eyelids are and that is optional but it's a good idea to have that. Um, you need a simple push to make switch for the blinking, you need a 10 kilo ohm resistor, a couple of jumper cables and 6 MG90S servos which you should be able to find dead cheap um, but if not there's links for everything in the description of this video. A quick point to make as well as I said in my last video um, the controller that I'm using in this video is kind of just a mount for the joystick potentiometer and button um, but the next video that I'm going to make is going to be on how to make that controller. So then moving on to printing um, most parts will print fine without needing any supports and 0.2mm layer height was more or less fine for all the different parts. A lower layer height is likely better up until a point. Um, depending on your printer there'll be a layer height that's, that'll produce the strongest result and I recommend that you try and find that layer height and use it. Mine seems to be about 0.2mm but I do recommend that you experiment a little bit and try and find one that's perfect for your printer. So in the parts that I've printed I've also tweaked the extrusion width a little bit to try and get a nice solid infill because there are some parts that are really small and they need to be as strong as possible. Um, the eyelids in particular, because it's such a thin part and it is a big overhang as well, there's a point on which the print transfers from brain almost completely vertical to actually being more of a horizontal and the transition point between the two um, can have like a single layer of really bad extrusion which will then break later on. Um, so for the eyelids my settings were an extrusion multiplier of 1.1 times because I just found that I needed a little bit more extrusion you might have different results. I used a default extrusion width of 160% um, which is uh, calculated as a percentage of the, the layer height. I used a layer height of 0.18mm and I used three perimeters so hopefully those settings will work for you. Um, this is specifically for the eyelids because they were the trickiest part to print but you might need to do some trial and error as I mentioned. Um, the infill doesn't matter too much, uh, just leave it at like 30% and then a lot of parts, a lot of small parts will end up being 100% anyway just because of the way that it's calculated. A lot of the really small pivots and stuff I tried to print at really low layer heights like 0.1mm thinking that they would need to be really precise um, but it actually seemed to work fine at 02 and in fact it was a little bit stronger so um, I wouldn't get too hung up on the resolution of your prints because it seems to function okay. Um, regardless. Just try and print everything to be as strong as possible because the only problems you're likely to run into are to do with threading screws into 3D printed material um, and if it's not strong enough it could uh, tear the layers apart. So just don't worry too much about resolution and think more about the strength of your prints. Um, I also used PLA which I actually think ABS would have been better choice because it's really low friction and uh, more flexible but I do find that PLA has the advantage of holding screws in very securely almost like a nylock nut and obviously it's way easier to print so don't worry too much about the material choice. So compared to the previous design there's a lot more smaller moving parts and because of that a lot of parts are going to need a little bit of adjustment to run smoothly. Um, one big thing in particular would be the eyelids. Uh, they're likely to need quite a bit of sanding because the tolerance between the eyes and the lids is actually really small to make it look more realistic. 
as compared to the previous design. In my designs I've used tolerances for stationary parts of about 0.2mm, that's between parts that aren't moving, but then for moving parts it's up to around 0.6mm, um, depending on different factors and where, the, where it is in the design and how critical it is. But because everyone's got a different printer, you're going to need to do little adjustments as you go, just to get everything running smoothly. The best thing to do would be to sand anything that's obviously out of shape as soon as you get it off the printer and then once you start putting the model together just keep a small file or some sandpaper or a craft knife just to adjust little bits as you go because there's likely to just be little things that need adjusting but nothing too big. Another thing to consider would be the size of the holes throughout the design. I've got some graphics to help you see what size all of the different holes should be so if your printer has a tendency to print them a little bit too small you could use a, a hand drill to just drill them a little bit larger. For me personally most of the holes worked perfectly straight off the printer um, but because everyone's going to have different printers you might just need to make some adjustments. So these graphics are also in the download if you need to refer to them again later. If you come across any really big problems with misalignment you could always use a heat gun to move big sections of the design but I highly doubt you'd need to go to those lengths. So now we're ready to actually assemble the design. So the first thing you want to do is attach the push rods to the eye links. This is probably the most delicate part of the design so it's good to get this out of the way first. As you screw the push rod in you might find that if your print isn't strong enough the hole could break apart. So if that happens you just need to maybe dial in your print settings to make it a little bit stronger and then if you're really having trouble you could always tap out that hole with a thread cutting tap. Just screw it in slowly and you're unlikely to have any problems there. You also want to attach a ball link to the other end of the push rod and you want to make four of these and make sure they're all the same length. You need to attach a servo horn to each of the ball links um, two of which should attach at the fourth hole from the centre and the other two of which will attach from the second hole from the centre. Um, and in both cases the bolt head should be on the side that has the raised section on the eye links and the servo horn should be underneath the ball link. Just have a look at the images if you're unsure. If you check the description for the download you should find full sized images of all these different references. Then using some M2 by 6mm screws assemble the inner eye mechanism. This is really difficult to explain but if you look at the, the graphics you should be able to figure out where everything goes. Notice that the left and right eyes are a mirror image of each other um, and just check with the images to make sure that you've done it right. So firstly you're going to want to attach one push rod to the large pivot with the bolt head on the side of the eye contactor with the raised section along with the eye centre holder. Then attach a push rod to the small pivot with the bolt head on the flat of the eye connector. Flex the eye adapter to accept the large and small pivots. Give it a quick wiggle around to make sure everything's able to move smoothly. If not, use some sandpaper or a craft knife to just get rid of any obstructions. Notice that these parts are all not touching each other in the final mechanism, so as you're moving it around, don't let them bang into each other because that might make you think there's an obstruction when really there isn't. Now's a good time to plug in the servos to the left and right bases using some M2 screws. The wires should come out towards the back of the mechanism but there's little holes to sort of indicate where the wires go so you're not likely to get that wrong. You can also attach the eye mechanism to the base and it's a good idea to use some glue to keep it secure. You want to attach the four eyelid holders with three M2 screws for each eyelid holder and note the orientation of the eyelid holders because the sloped section should face the outside relative to the centre of the entire eye mechanism which would mean that on the left base both eyelid holders face left. Um, again just look at the images to make sure you've got it right because it can be a little bit hard to sort of convey. You also want to screw in a 10mm M2 screw into each eyelid holder such that they face inwards towards each other. Um, they might not go in all the way, um, just wait until you get your eyelids in later to know exactly how far they need to go um, because it will depend on sort of really minor differences and imperfections with the printer. Load up the sub base with two MG90S servos facing each other held in with some M2 screws. This is a sort of awkward angle to get some screws into but, but for me the PLA was more than flexible enough to be able to get in there. You then need to attach the eyelid actuator arms to um, the two pairs of eyelids and notice that the flat edge of the actuator arm is facing towards the centre of 
the eyes so that would mean that the actuator arm connecting to the top eyelids faces down whereas the actuator arm connecting to the bottom eyelids faces up. You also need to attach a servo horn to each of the eyelid arms on the second hole from the centre using an M2 screw which will need to be about 10mm. You can now plug in the eyes and slide in the bottom eyelid assembly and flex the eyelid holders slightly to get the lids into the pivots. Then attach the top eyelid assembly but don't worry about linking up any of the servo horns yet. So now is a good time to wire everything up to the Arduino as you can see in the wiring diagram and upload the code. So when you turn it on um, all of the servos should go into their neutral position because the joystick will be in a neutral position which would mean that the eyes were facing straight forwards. So this is a good time to link up all the servos such that the eyes are facing forward as they should be. So you can easily just push them on gently and then turn the power off and screw it in to hold it securely. As you go in just test everything to make sure that it's working as intended. You can do the same for the eyelids um, but it's a good idea to hold the button down so that they're in the blink position and then and then attach the servo horns to the servos so that the eyelids meet up in a closed position. Again the, the servos at the back are in a really awkward position to accept that centre screw but if you're careful you can sort of flex the assembly just enough to get a screwdriver in and you should find that your model is complete. So if you've got any issues just check all of the um, graphics that I've provided to make sure that everything's assembled right because there are some parts that would be easy to get wrong. If it's a little bit stiff it's likely to loosen up after a bit of use but if not you might need to just sand some parts a little bit more. The eyelids are sort of the main thing to look out for because it can be hard to tell if they're actually restricting the eye um, so make sure the eyelids are sanded well enough. And yeah so that's it. Um, if you want to read some text instructions to maybe go through it a little bit more slowly you can check my instructable um, and all of the graphics that I've brought up are also on there. If you didn't see my last video I mentioned that I'd started a Patreon where I'm posting behind the scenes updates and I'm also giving out some free stickers. It's been fantastic to get so much support already so I'm very thankful to everyone who's supported me on there and just in general anyone who watches these videos and subscribes to me. But is a particularly big thank you to Aaron Haley, Eric Farrow, William Winstead, Sid Taylor, Mike Porter, Michael Shepard, Michael, Simon Hershey, Rick Gordon, Paul Lopes, Ian James, Ernst Rue Stratemans, Maker Project Lab, Jason Souser, uh, Jason Moore, Christopher LaRoche, Fitznips, and Aaron Nance. The next video I'm going to make is going to be about the controller, which is a nice alternative to just having all your uh, joystick and whatnot on a breadboard. Um, so I hope you will come back to watch that video, uh, think about subscribing, uh, think about having a look at my Patreon if you want a cool sticker, and I hope to see you in the next video.